Lord, yes, Lord. Oh, as you're sitting there, as you're waiting, Father God, let us raise our hands. Let us worship him. Let us thank him. Thank the Lord Almighty for Yahweh. Oh, our Father, Yeshua, our Messiah, Ruach. Holy Spirit, have your way. Oh, prepare us. Prepare us, Father God. Prepare us for this wonderful and glorious message in this day. But as you sit there right there, I just want you to 
I just want you to reminisce and think right now. I just want you to just concentrate on his word. Concentrate on his beauty. Concentrate on what he has done. Hallelujah. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary pure and holy tried and true with thanksgiving I'll be a living sanctuary for you Lord prepare me to be a sanctuary pure and holy tried and true with thanksgiving I'll be a living sanctuary for you hallelujah thank you father it is you Lord who gave the Savior heart and soul Lord to every man it is you, Lord, who knows all my weakness. You refine me with your hand. Lead me, O oh Lord, and through temptation, you refine me from within. Fill our hearts with your Holy Spirit. Take all our sins away. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. With thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Many of you right now sitting there and standing, whatever you're doing, just let him be. Tell him to prepare you to be his sanctuary, Father God, true and holy, Father God. Hallelujah. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving. I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true with thanksgiving. I'll be a living sanctuary for you. With thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Gloria a Dios. Oh, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Bendito sea el nombre del Señor para siempre. ¿Cuántos de ustedes están allí? Levanten sus manos, levanten sus voces y díganle al Señor, eres rey, eres rey. Gloria a tu nombre para siempre, Señor. ¿Qué tan grande es el Señor que hoy en este mismo día nos levantó? Y nos dijo, ven, ven a alabar, ven a glorificar con amor, con espíritu y verdad. A tus pies arde mi corazón, a tus pies entrego lo que soy, es el lugar de mi seguridad. Donde nadie me puede señalar 
Me perdonaste, me acercaste a tu presencia Me levantaste, hoy me postro a adorarte No hay lugar más alto, más grande Que estar a tus pies, que estar a tus pies No hay lugar más alto, más grande que estar a tus pies, que estar a tus pies, a tus pies Arde mi corazón, a tus pies entrego lo que soy Es el lugar de mi seguridad Donde nadie me puede señalar Me perdonaste me acercaste a tu presencia Me levantaste Hoy me postro a adorarte No hay lugar más alto Más grande Que estar a tus pies Que estar a tus pies No hay lugar más alto Más grande Que estar a tus pies a tus pies me perdonaste me acercaste a tu presencia me levantaste hoy me postro a adorarte no hay lugar más alto más grande que estar a tus pies que estar a tus pies no hay lugar más alto, más grande, que estar a tus pies, que estar a tus pies, no hay lugar más alto, más grande, que estar a tus pies, que estar a tus pies, no hay lugar más alto más grande que estar a tus pies que estar a tus pies me perdonaste me acercaste a tu presencia me levantaste hoy me postro a adorarte no hay lugar más alto más grande que estar a tus pies, que estar a tus pies, no hay lugar más alto, más grande, que estar a tus pies, 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 Señor te adoro, que tan grande eres mi Dios, aleluya. Lord, you're so worthy. When I sing your songs, my Father God, when I praise and worship you, I just feel your presence. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to God. Welcome everybody. Welcome to the Altar of Truth Church service, virtual service. Here we are praising and worshiping God. I'm so glad to see all of you that you guys could make it out here. Thank you so much for joining us today. And as you know, we have, yes, the shofar. The shofar that we play every time before. Because why? Because it's the power. It's the instrument. It's the trumpet that you read about in the Word of God. It's the trumpet that you read about that knocked down the walls of Jericho. The trumpet that you read about when the wars were won. This is the instrument. This is the weapon. And today I'm going to pray. And I'm going to blow this shofar. I'm going to blow this trumpet. And I want right now to uh, that when we blow this, that you guys will raise your hands. And if you have a shofar with you, blow it with me. Yes, blow it with me. This shofar is going to knock down the walls of depression, the walls of anxiety, the walls of sickness, the walls of confusion. And most of all, today I want this. I want to knock down the walls of pride, the walls of sti stiff necks, the walls, Father God, that has kept people from coming in to the truth. I'm going to do that right now, and I'm going to pray in the name of Jesus. Let us sound our horn in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Glory be to God. Glory be to the Almighty. Again, welcome everybody. Welcome everybody. Oh, Jesus. Yeshua has been so good. He has been so good. I'm going to, how many are you excited to get into the word of God? Woo! Man. Blessed be thy day. Blessed be thy day. I want you to all have, if you have your, um, if you have your Bibles with you, your pens, your markers, your highlighters, your pads and stuff. You need to get this because today I'm going to talk about a, a very, very special word. They're all special, but today this word, I want you all to really listen and pay attention because this is something that we really need to know. God, the Holy Spirit has revealed this to me, has given this to me in the name above all names. I pray right now, let us pray. I pray right now that every ear, Everyone that has an ear, let them open their ears. Everyone who has eyes, let them see. Father God, I pray right now that this word will go deep into the hearts, into the souls, Father God. I pray right now that your word, Father God, will just speak to the people out there. I pray this in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah. Amen and amen. Well, let's get started in Jesus' name. Now, I'm going to start by talking a little bit here about a few things, and then we're going to get into it. Okay, blessed be thy day. Today is the Sabbath. Today is Shabbat. Today is the day that was set aside by God. We're going to talk about that, but we're going to get into some, some scriptures. We're going to get into some scripture, but I want to ask you a question. When you think about the Holy Land, what is it that comes to your mind? Israel, right? And then when you think about the Holy City, then you have to think about Jerusalem. Jerusalem, right? Jerusalem, right? In the ancient times, when you wanted to go to a temple, you would go to this holy temple, right? But in this temple in the middle, in the intersection, right deep inside, there was a place called the Holy of Holies, okay? There was one thing that was in this place of Holy of Holies, and many of you might know this, but in this Holy of Holies, there was this ark, okay? You guys know, right? There was this ark, a golden box, okay? Many of you have heard about it which is still missing up to now, you know, but you know who knows where it's at, right? Our father knows where, this, where the ark is at. But what made this box, golden ark, uh, um, a national treasure? What made it so national, I mean, something? There was something in this box, okay, in this ark that it, it was holy of holies. That's why it was in the holy of holies. Now, when you think about it, in the Bible, it talks about these items that were in this box. But there was an item in there that, whoa, the Ten Commandments were placed in this ark. The Ten Commandments were placed in this golden ark. Yes, the Ten Commandments. So now, when you think about the Ten Commandments and you start thinking about it, where and how many times do you find the word holy in the Ten Commandments? Have you ever thought about that? Where do you find the word holy in the Ten Commandments? 
It's only, it's only one time. Yes, only one time. And guess where it's at? It's in the fourth commandment. It's in the commandment of the Sabbath rest. Go with me to Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Okay? Glory be to God. Exodus chapter 20, starting in verse 8. This is the fourth commandment, okay? This is a command, and, and I'm, I'm going to get into it more and more, but I'm going to start with this. We're going to start by reading it, okay? The Bible says, in the fourth commandment, it says, Remember the Sabbath day, to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work, you nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that is in them and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Hmm. Keep that in mind. He made the seventh day holy. Okay? He hallowed the seventh day. Isn't it interesting that how God linked this day to creation? Have you ever thought about that? When you're reading the fourth commandment, it talks about when he created the heavens and the earth in six days. He linked it together. Now, there's a reason. Okay, we're going to get into it. Go with me on this journey. God linked this day, identifying this day. It reminds me that we're dealing with a God of creation. Yes, a God of creation. But I also see God in this commandment he wanted to make us holy. He wanted to make us holy. Now, life is composed of time. Okay? There's time. Years. And God is love. Do we agree with that? Okay. So, if we agree with that, life is composed of time, God is love, you can't love without time. Then you might ask, Pastor, what do you mean? Well, think about it. When you love somebody, you want to spend quality time with that person. When you get to know somebody and you get to know him for the first time and you really have that connection, what do you want to do? You want to spend time with them. You want to spend quality time with them. Even when you're now in, in a family and stuff like that. How many times haven't you heard someone say, you don't spend qu enough quality time with us. You're always working. You're always doing other things. So we live all week long, but do we spend quality time with our loved ones? Because love is nourished in quality time. During the time you get to nourish, you nourish each other. You nourish quality time. This is why. Now, stay with me, okay? Because this is what I'm talking about. I'm talking about God made a certain day for certain things because he wanted it that way. But pastor... If you're saying that we don't spend quality time with God every day, yeah, we do. What do you? Quality time? And is that what God said for us to do? God said a special day aside for one thing is to spend quality time with us. This is why he set that day aside. You read that, you read that, that fourth commandment and you read it and it says, this is the day. This is the day. Okay. But isn't it interesting how God says, if you love him, go with me to John chapter 14. Glory be to God. Excuse me. John chapter 14 verse 15 says this. If you love me, keep my commandments. Now, isn't that interesting? Why couldn't he say, if you love me, pray all the time, if you love me, do this, if you love me, do this. but he said specifically, if you love me, keep my commandments. Well, blessed ones, the fourth commandment is part of the commandments, right? But you know one thing I know, that Satan has always been after destroying our relationship with God. And he's still trying to destroy the quality of time and, and the love relationship between people and God. From the beginning, he's been trying to separate us. 
And he has especially attacked the Sabbath day. And he continues to do so. Why do you think that the enemy has put so much work in destroying the worship and the rest of the Sabbath? Why do you think he concentrates on this so much? Hmm? Now, do you remember Adam and Eve? Do you remember when God said, you can have all this tree, every single fruit, every single thing that's in here, but stay away from one tree? Who came in there and destroyed that? Who deceived them to actually eat on one tree, the only tree? They had tons of trees. They had everything they wanted. Well, think about it. There was one day that our God set aside for us. And the enemy came and took, but we'll get there. I want you to keep that in mind, okay? Now, there are two things that God says the Sabbath is, okay? Go with me to Exodus chapter 31. Verse 17. Exodus 31, 17. The Bible says this. This is the Sabbath. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. Well, you see, Pastor, there it is. It's for the Israel. He gave it to Israel. Hold on. Well, haven't we learned? If we are of Christ, we are Abraham's seed. Go with me to Galatians chapter 3, verse 29. The Bible says this, And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So if we are of Christ, we're Abraham's seed. So we are Israel. We're part of this. Don't let anybody tell you you're not. You are. You've been grafted in. You are part of Israel. Okay? So did he only create this for the Jews? Only? Or did he create it for everybody? Remember I told you there's two things about this? Let's go to the second one, which is Ezekiel chapter 20. Go with me to the book of Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 12. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. The Bible says this. Moreover, I also gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between them and me that they might know that I am the Lord who sanctifies them. Whoa. So, does God only sanctify Jewish people? Or does everyone need to be sanctified by the Lord? Sanctified by the Lord. Is he the creator of only the Jewish people? Or is he the creator of everyone? See? He created through this to make us holy and sanctify us. He said it in the commandment. To sanctify us. Let me ask you. When did God's people stop needing that? When did we stop needing sanctification and holiness? Do we still need rest? We talked about that last week. Of course we do. Did God make the Sabbath only for Israelites? For Israel? No. No. Go with me to Mark chapter 2, verse 27. Mark chapter 2, verse 27. Glory be to God. The Bible says, And he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. So he said the Sabbath was made for Jews, right? No. He said it was made for man. It was made for mankind, which includes women, of course. But then also he also included animals, not just Jewish animals. He included all of them because remember the animals used to work with them. God was clear. It was made for everybody. It was made for everybody. And then I'll, I'll even show you another scripture in Isaiah chapter 56. Isaiah 56, starting in verse 6. The Bible says this, And foreigners who bind themselves to the Lord to minister to Him, to love the name of the Lord and to be His servants, all who keep the Sabbath without desecrating it and who hold fast to my covenant, 
These I will bring to my holy mountain and give them joy in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. Do you notice that God, Yah, even Yeshua, everybody always referred to the Sabbath. Always referred to the Sabbath. If you keep this, if you keep my commandments, keep my Sabbath, don't do this. It always was. It's important. It's imp it was important to God then. It's important to him now. But you know what? Let's continue. Let's go on this journey. I'm going to show you a lot of things here. The Sabbath was a promise. What does he promise when you keep the Sabbath? Joy. That's what he said right there. He told them even the foreigners and everybody who keep my Sabbath will bring joy. Okay? It's to be a blessing. He didn't curse the day. He blessed it. He blessed it. So now, I'm going to tell you a little story. Okay? And um, just bear with me, okay? I want to give you the story. When I was growing up, my father always wanted us to become, be part of a religious, you know, um, a religious church, you know, somewhere. So my dad didn't know the Lord back then, you know, when I was younger, me and my brother, my sister. And um, he would take us to these different churches, right? Um, I don't know. I never asked my dad why, but... Um, I attended these churches, and they were all on Sunday, right? I attended Catholic church. Yeah. I was a Baptist. I even went to, we even became Christian scientists. Can you believe that? <laughs> we became Christian scientists. From there, when I grew up and I was a little older, I, be, I, I started going to an apostolic. I became an apostolic. And then I ended up in the Pentecostal movement, right? And during this, all this time, I knew that God had something more for me. Because there was always an empty an emptiness in my heart. There was something missing. I don't know what it was. Until God showed me. And I started learning all this. I started learning the whole Bible. Not only half of the Bible. I started learning the whole Bible. And I started learning about the Torah and the Tanakh. And all these teachings and everything. And I started getting more and more in, in, in the word and the scriptures. And it started showing me more and more truth. Then I got a little upset. And I said, wait a minute. I said, why? Why was I never told this? Why were we never taught this? Even in all the denominations I went through, none of them taught, nobody taught this. And I was like, wow. And I got a little upset and bothered because I asked, why? Why? Right? Now, the more I look at these commandments and the more I study them to, the, to its fullest, these are ten commandments. Okay, from God. Not ten recommendations or ten suggestions. They're commandments. You know, we're always out there trying to be careful not to break laws of highway laws, city laws, state laws, federal laws. But we don't consider, even consider how breaking the laws of God are more crucial for our existence in this world. I'm telling you. Oh, I don't want to, oh no, you, oh, you, you're in the highway and you're driving and you're like, you're thinking about that law. But yet, when do we ever think about the laws of God? The true, the laws that we should be following. Now, I'm not saying don't break the laws of man. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying the laws of God should be the most important laws for us to follow. Because he is our creator. He is our God. These commandments were written in stone by God's own finger. This should be something the churches should be start to look at more seriously. They should start looking at this more seriously instead of convicting people about not receiving blessings because they haven't given tithes or offerings. Come on, let's be real. I said it with love though. I said it with love. What are you going to say when you get to heaven? Huh? What are you going to say when you're in the judgment seat? Oh, Lord, you know, I know I didn't follow all your laws, your Torah laws, but I did go to church every Sunday and I did pay my tithes and offerings. You, you know what the answer is going to be, right? You know what the response is going to be. Get away from me. I never knew you. I'm sorry, but that's scriptural. Because God said, if you don't follow my commandments, you're not worthy of the tree of life. Huh? Really? Go with me to Revelation. 
chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22. Now we're, we're talking about the set aside day, the Sabbath, the day that he sanctified and hallowed, the holy day. Okay, Revelation chapter 22 verse 12. Now this is the last book in the Bible. Okay, now look what he says. I'm reading off the Amplified Version. He says, Behold, I, Jesus, Yeshua, am coming quickly and my rewards is with me to give to each according to the merit of his deeds, earthly works, faithfulness. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. The, he's the eternal one. Blessed, it says blessed, happy, prosperous, to be admired, are those who wash their robes. Now, in this it says, in the blood of Christ, by believing and trusting in him. The righteous who do his commandments so that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter by the gates into the city. Well, guess what, blessed ones? If you're not following the commandments, the ones that he wrote with his own finger, you need to think about that. You know, some, some will come to you and say, well, yeah, yeah I, you know, we know about the Sabbath, you know, the commandment law that was given to Moses by God on Mount Sinai, you know. But it was only for the Israelites. Well, let's take a look again, okay? Well, let's think about this very carefully. How far does this Sabbath go? How, how important was this day? And how far does it go back? You know, we find it <coughs> in the commandments, right? In the, in the Ten Commandments. But go with me back and let's see how important this was to God. Okay? Let's go to Genesis chapter 2. Glory be to God. Genesis chapter 2. And let's start at verse 2. Okay? Genesis 2 2. It says, And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. Now, mm, let's think about this one. This is way before he gave the commandments to Moses on the mountain. This is in the beginning when he finished creating the heavens and the earth. He specifically said that he blessed this day and sanctified it. How important is this day to our Father? Now, blessed ones, do you think for one minute Adam and Eve didn't follow God's Sabbath in which he specifically added in the beginning of creation? Now, if you think, if you think that he said, okay, Adam and Eve, I'm going to create this day. I'm going, to, I'm going to make it holy. But you don't have to follow it because I'm going to have the Israelites follow it later, okay? And then later on, I'm going to get rid of it. Come on. Let's wake up. This is an important day for God. This is why he's mentioned it so many times from the beginning of creation. We're in Genesis 2, the second chapter of the Bible. They all followed it. I'm sure that Adam and Eve on, because remember the responsibility they were given? They were, they were given responsibility to look after everything he created? So I'm pretty sure that he, they, they did their thing six days and on the seventh day God would get there and come on, let's rest. Remember, this is the day I sanctified. This is the holy day. Well, okay, let, let's say Adam and Eve. Well, well, what about the father of faith? You know who the father of faith is, right? We call, it's called Abraham. His name is Abraham. Abram. Let's go with me to Genesis chapter 26. Now I'm going to show you these because I want you to see how important and how much God wanted us to acknowledge this day that he blessed. Genesis 26 chapter 4. I mean, chapter 26 verse 4. Excuse me. Now here's God talking to Abraham, okay? He's saying, and I will make descendants multiply as the stars of heaven. I will give to your descendants all these lands, and in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Now, we said we're the seed of Abraham, right? Because Abraham obeyed my voice, kept my charge, 
my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. Wait a minute. Wasn't the laws given in the mount? So, every God had already been giving the laws to the people that were there. Okay? The, the reason he put it on that mountain was his signature was on it. Okay? But he had already... He'd already done it with Adam and Eve and all. He's already, you know, got them to understand this, this important day. Okay? This is what I'm saying. Even before God gave Moses the commandments, he was showing the people how to follow the Sabbath. He was already, fo Abraham followed the Sabbath. They all followed the Sabbath before he went up to the mountain, before Moses went up. Now let's look at Exodus when it talks about God how he actually introduced it to the Israelites when they came out of uh, captivity. Go with me to Exodus chap chapter 16. This is how important this day is, blessed ones. You need to really understand this. Exodus chapter 16. We're going to start in verse 4. Now look at what's happening here, okay? Now we're, we're, we're in the wilderness. These are the Israelites and they're in the wilderness. You know, they're, they're moving around. Then the Lord said to Moses, this is what it says. The Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will rain, I will rain bread from heaven, which is the manna, right? For you. And the people shall go out and gather a certain quota every day that I may test them. Hmm. Whether they will walk in my law or not. What? And it shall be on the sixth day on the sixth day that they shall prepare what they bring in and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. Did you hear, did you just hear what I read? Did you read this? Okay, he's telling them, I am going to rain bread from heaven, man, but this is a test. And I thought about this as well. I, I, I thought that he was, bringing a bread from heaven so that they can eat. Of course he did. But it was a test to see if they, what law? Bear with me. Why gather more than six days, you know? Because the seventh day, the sixth day gather everything because on the seventh day, I want you to rest on my holy Sabbath. That is what he meant when he said that I will test them whether they walk in my law. Go further down to verse 22. Same chapter, Exodus 16, verse 22. The Bible says this, And so it was on the sixth day that they gathered twice as much bread, two omers for each one, and all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses. Then he said to them, he said to them, This is what the Lord has said. Tomorrow is a Sabbath rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord bake what you will bake today and boil what you will boil and lay up for yourselves all the remains to keep it until morning in other words on this sixth day do everything you have to do because god told me he wanted you to rest on the seventh day the sabbath there is no confusion here Now you see the Lord gave them specific instructions to gather bread twice more on Friday, which is the sixth day, so they would not have to work on that set-apart day, the Sabbath, which he sanctified and made holy. But won't you know it? There's always those that never listen. Huh? Further down, let's go to verse 27. Same chapter, Exodus 16, 27. The Bible says, and it happened that some of the people went out on the seventh day to gather. Cabezones. Hard heads. But they found none. But you know, look at what, what the Lord tells Moses. The Lord said to Moses, how long do you refuse to keep my commandments and my laws? Now think about this, blessed ones. Do you think he's saying that right now? Do you think he's saying that to people right now? How long will you refuse to keep my commandments and my laws? He brought them bread to test them to see if he would, they would walk in his law. What law? The Sabbath day. The law. And wouldn't you know it? There were some people out there on the seventh day. They didn't find nothing. 
Because God specifically said, I'm not going to give you nothing on the seventh day. Because it's for you to rest and worship and praise and love me. My, my, my. It's repeating itself. This is what's happening. We're, we're out here in the wilderness. We're getting to a place where we have to get to. But there's all these people that are not paying attention. It was a commandment long before it was given to Moses in Mount Sinai in the Ten Commandments. You know, also way before Exodus in the book of Genesis. Right? I want to show you something that I, I was reading and I kind of looked at and it, it popped out on me, right? I want to take you back to Genesis, okay? Go with me to Genesis chapter 2. Bear with me, okay? I want, I want to show you something. Genesis chapter 2 and we're going to start in verse 1. Okay, and this one, I want you to get your pens, get your pencils, your markers, your highlighters, and I want you to highlight a certain word here, okay? Genesis chapter 2, verse 1. The Bible says, Thus the heavens and the earth and all the hosts of them were finished, okay? Creation. And on the seventh day, underline seventh, God ended his work, which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day, underline that seventh, from all his work which he had done, then God blessed the seventh day, underlined that seventh, and sanctified it, because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. How many sevens do you find there? Do you notice about the scripture? It's popped out on me, okay? I notice that there's three sevens here, right? It's, it's interesting. It's interesting. Because God repeats this seven three times, the only place you'll find that. You might say, come on, pastor, that's, that's that, you know, basic theology. But it's interesting to me because this says 777. Seven, seven. What is the mark of the beast? 666. Six, six. Strange, isn't it? The one is the number of God and the other is the number of man. Well, didn't King Nebuchadnezzar, remember King Nebuchadnezzar? Built a statue 60 cubits high, 6 cubits wide, probably 6 wide, 6 deep. But he tells everybody after he builds it to bow down. Isn't it interesting that these 6s are in this statue also? Huh? Satan has always wanted to be praised and worshipped from the get-go. He's always wanted that. He's always trying to mirror God. He wants to be God, which he never will be. But that's what he does. Okay, so everything he copies, everything. Think about what he has done in this world and think about he copies God. He tries to be like God. He can never be. Why do you think he told Yeshua, Jesus, to fall down and worship him in the wilderness? Remember he told him, fall down, fall down and worship me. That's all he wanted, really. So we go back and look at scripture and we're looking at this and we're saying, this was very important to God. This Sabbath rest, this day that he made holy was so important to God that he started it way in the beginning of creation. And did you see Revelation 22 where we read? He's still talking about it. Ah, but you have those Bible scholars that come in and try to throw these scriptures at you. There's a famous scripture out there that they use, and we all know it. huh? It's, it, I call it the famous taken out of context scripture in the Bible. That's what I call it, because it sure is taken out of context. Go with me to chapter, Matthew chapter 5. We're going to start in verse 17. Okay? Now this is the scripture that when people come and tell you, whenever they're telling you, why do you worship on Saturday? Why do you worship the Sabbath? Don't you know that, that the Lord came and took that away? Well, let's read it, okay? Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Starting in verse 17. The Bible says, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. Right? I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. Now, if he would have stopped there, then we could have probably had, wow, there's, there's a serious argument here, you know. He says fulfill, but if we, we didn't know what the fulfill meant really from the Hebraic and, and the actual Jewish, um, we will know. But he continues. He continues to, to clarify this, quantify it. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, 
not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen, will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Let's stop there. Just with that. Heaven and earth. Hmm. They haven't disappeared. So that means when he said, I have come to abolish, I'm not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. He said, they need to be fulfilled. I came to remind you how to do this, to continue this, because until heaven and earth are done away with, the laws are still in effect. That's what this says. And then he continued to say, therefore anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commands and teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. Oh my God, Lord Jesus, thank you. That is true confirmation right there. He's telling you this is not done yet. So why do you think that I would have done away with the law? And he even goes on to tell you about surpassing the righteousness. The righteousness surpasses the Pharisees. We know who the Pharisees were. Remember, we, we read, we, we, we taught about this, we talked about this. The Pharisees were the people that were throwing all these different, you know, laws in God's Torah. But it says if you do not do this, you certainly do not enter the kingdom of heaven. This is direct. Our Messiah told us directly and clear, clearly that he did not come to abolish the law. He did not come to destroy it. And if you look where he was making this speech, you're going to find that he was in Sermon on the Mount. He was giving it to thousands of people. That's another teaching. But then he says, if you break the least important commandment in the law and teach others to do the same, you will be considered the least in the kingdom of heaven. Well, I'm here to argue with you that the fourth commandment by far, the Sabbath is not the least important commandment in the law. Uh, as I read this, in fact, it's one of the most important commandments of, the, uh, of worship to God. It's one of the most important commandments. Why? Because in the beginning, when he created the heavens and the earth, what did he say? On the seventh day, I will, I will make this, sanctify this day. He didn't say nothing about, thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not do this, thou shalt not do that. He mentioned the Sabbath. Is it important for him? But the question is, it is important for you. Go with me to Exodus chapter 31. Now, the Bible also says that breaking the Sabbath is punishable by death. All right. Let's go to Exodus 31. We'll start in uh, verse 14. The Bible says this. It says, observe the Sabbath because it, it is holy to you. Anyone who desecrates it is to be put to death. Those who do any work on the day must be cut off from their people. And then he goes on to say this again. For six days work is to be done, but the seventh day is the day of the Sabbath rest. Holy to, excuse me, holy to the Lord. Whoever does any work on the Sabbath day is put to death. Well, come on, pastor, you know. Think he's going to kill us? And that, well, let me tell you, the day of judgment is coming. We are in the last days. We're in, we're in the labor pain days. So if you want to find out if the Sabbath day, then people have come and asked me. They have come and maybe asked you too. If the Sabbath day is so important, well, why did it change to Sunday? Who changed it? And by, why, but by what authority? Well, let me, but let me start by saying this. I want to clarify something. There is not one single verse in the Bible that states that God changed the seventh day of the week to the first day of the week, Saturday to Sunday. I want to clarify that. I want you to clarify that. I want you to make sure that you know that, that nowhere in the Bible is there any verse that says that God made this change. Okay? But it was changed. We all know that, right? 
And then a lot of people go and use Paul as they, they come and tell you, well, you know who changed it? It was Paul, Apostle Paul, Shaul. Many use the scripture about Paul breaking bread on the first day because we know that if the seventh is Saturday, the first day must be Sunday, right? We're clear with that? Go with me to Acts chapter 20, verse 7. Now, this is the scripture that a lot of people use to tell you that Paul changed it, okay? Because there's all kinds of things out there. Every, there's philosophies and all kinds of descriptions on this. So this is one they use. Acts chapter 20, verse 7, the Bible says, On the first day of the week, which is Sunday, we came together to break bread. Paul spoke to the people, and because he intended to leave the next day, kept on talking until midnight. Stop right there, okay? On the first day of the week, we came together to break bread. Okay, now Paul's in there. It's the first day of the week. This doesn't say anything about the Sabbath. Changing the Sabbath to Sunday. They're breaking bread. In fact, this breaking of bread or fellowshipping was practiced throughout the whole scriptures. The disciples gathered regularly to break bread. In fact, the Bible tells us they met daily to break bread. Go with me to Acts 2. Acts chapter 2, verse 46. Huh? Acts chapter 2, verse 46. The Bible says this. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Did you see what it says here? They met daily. So this first day in which they met was common gathering, as stated in the word, and has nothing to do with Sabbath observance. It has nothing to do with it, as it has nothing to do with you saying, well, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I, I worship and praise God every day. Beautiful. That's what we need to do. But there is a special day he set aside. That's the whole thing here. That's the teaching. What day is he talking about? Why has he made the Sabbath so important? You see? The Sabbath observance is, is by far important. There is no commandment to assemble on the first day of the week, but there is one to assemble on the seventh. If this scripture is what they used to argue, the change from Sabbath Saturday to Sunday, it's extremely weak. It's extremely weak. And you can see it yourselves. But there was a change, right? We all know there was a change because we look outside and there's people worshiping on Sundays. Tons of people. But who changed it? Now, there's a, there, there is a, a document out there called the Converts Catechism of Catholic Doctrine. Look it up. Okay? Look it up because... Everything I'm telling you here, I'm telling you, it's all out there. The Converts Catechism of Catholic Doctrine, and this is what we read, this is what I read. There was a question, and it was said, which is a Sabbath day? This is the answer. Saturday is a Sabbath day. Question. Why do we observe Sunday instead of Saturday? Answer. We observe Sunday instead of Saturday because the Catholic Church in the Council of Laodicea, AD 336, transferred the solemnity, which is a form of dignified rite of ceremony, from Saturday to Sunday. Huh? And then the question, why did the Catholic Church substitute Sunday for Saturday? And then the answer was, a church substituted, the church substituted Sunday for Saturday because Christ rose from the dead on a Sunday and the Holy Ghost descended upon the apostles on a Sunday. That's what they said, right? So the question is asked, but what authority? But what authority did church substitute Sunday for Saturday? And the answer is this. The church substituted Sunday for Saturday by the plentitude of that divine power which Jesus Christ bestowed upon her. 1946, page 50. The Catholics are saying, no, don't, I'm not picking on Catholics. I'm reading what, excuse me, I'm sorry. I'm reading what it says here, okay? What document I found. The Catholics are saying that God, Jesus, gave them the power to do this. It bestowed upon them. Go ahead and change. Go ahead. Even though I taught it to Adam and Eve and all the way through, all the way through, you go ahead and change it. I'm going to allow you to. 
Man, wake me up. All this time, God is, 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 is showing us how to follow this law, this Sabbath. And all of a sudden, the Catholics come and say, oh, no, God gave us permission. God gave us permission. He said, uh, I'm going to let you guys change it. I wrote it with my finger, but you guys can go ahead and erase it. In. The Catholic Church said they changed the Saturday. And you know what? If you ask them, they'll tell you. I, you know, I've seen interviews with the big, you know, those guys that are in, uh, out there in uh, uh, where Vatican City. They'll tell you, yeah, we, we changed it. We have the power to do so. In the 4th century, they changed it. In the Council of Leodosia. Now let's take a look at what the Council said during that time. There is a, there is, when you look at these, there is a thing called canon. Okay, it's like an article, a canon, a member of a chapter of a priest, right? And you see canon 1, canon 2, canon 3, canon 2. So if you go to canon 29 during this council meeting, this is what was, the, this is what was said. In canon 29 of this document, of the Catholic document, it says, Christians must not Judaize, okay? So Judaize meaning Jewish, you know, by resting on the Sabbath, but must work on that day, rather honoring the Lord's day, and if they can, resting then as Christians. But if any shall be found to be Judaizers, let them be anathema, which means set aside and cursed from Christ. You see what they said? They said this. The Catholics cited that they changed Saturday to Sunday, which is a change, but not by biblical standards. Not by biblical permission. That change was instituted by the Catholic Church, not God. This explains why Catholics keep Sunday. Catholics are big on their Sundays. They are. I was a Catholic too. But then we ask, but why do Protestants and Christians keep Sunday? Well, ultimately, it comes down to tradition. You see, the Catholic Church kept Sunday for such a long time that when the Protestant reformers broke away from the Catholic Church, they kept many of the deeply embedded traditions such as Sunday worship. So many have told me that Sabbath can be any day we choose. Now let me tell you something. I have heard people on TV, big pastors, mega church pastors, when they're asked, and you can, you can Google this, you can see this yourself. When they're asked, when is the Sabbath? They'll right away tell you, it's Saturday. They all know that. They all know that. There's even a person out there, I'm not going to mention no names. There's a person out there that's pretty famous. He's a famous producer. Uh, uh, he has a lot of his hands in Hollywood and stuff. And apparently, he's, I think he's a seven-day Adventist or something. I don't know for sure. But I know that when he was, uh, he was interviewed one time, he, he said, I do not work on the Sabbath. As a matter of fact, on Friday evening, my phone goes off. And it doesn't come on until Saturday. But yet, this person is out there preaching on Sundays. Does that make sense? So I'm going to keep the Sabbath, but I'm going to let everybody else fall because I'm going to have them, you know, come in on Sundays. That doesn't make sense to me. But so many have told you, told me, they have come to me and they said the Sabbath, we can choose because one of the pastors, one of these big mega church pastors says, the Sabbath can be any day. The reason they say that is because is that if that's the case, they can keep their Sunday and call it a Sabbath. But did call? But did God call a Sunday a Sabbath? I don't. I don't. It's not in the Bible. But we see that it was must be the seventh day, as it was set apart right after creation. Even in Genesis, on the seventh day he rested. On the seventh day he rested. Keep my Sabbath. I'm going to test you. I'm going to bring bread. I'm going to test you because on that day I want you resting. Now everything is set up on this day. Genesis chapter 2 verse 3 says it. It says, Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. He rested on that day. Do we need rest? More than ever during these times. Do you agree? 
But then people have come and have asked, have said, but it, it also tells us that this Sabbath is a day of assembly, right? I've heard many pastors, bishops, Bible teachers say that they honor the Sabbath, just like I told you earlier. They honor the Sabbath, they do, by recognizing it on the 7th, but they gather on Sundays. Does that make sense? I keep saying no. The argument is that they never said we couldn't gather on a Sunday. You know, you can pray every day. You can have Bible studies every day. You can do something. But on that special day, on that day when you congregate, when you lift up your name, when you spend all that day, that day was designated and commanded to be on Saturday the Sabbath. And even, I'm even going to show you something here where it says that he wanted us to congregate on the Sabbath. Go with me to Leviticus chapter 23. Verse 3. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 3. This is what the Bible says. Now, I hope you're reading it with me. There are six days when you may work, but the seventh day is a day of Sabbath rest, a day of sacred assembly. And some it says holy convocation. That's what is called a large formal assembly of people. You are not to do any work wherever you live. It is a Sabbath to the Lord. Did you read that? Everybody? You read that? The seventh day is a day of Sabbath rest, a day of sacred assembly, holy convocation. A day of gathering formal assembly with people. What is that telling you? Huh? That's right. The Bible cons consistently tells us the Sabbath is the seventh day. And never once does it tell us that we can choose whatever day for the Sabbath. It never told us you can choose your day. Why would God do that? Why would God say, I'm going to create this, I'm going to write it with my finger, I'm going to do all this, everything, I'm going to teach and all, but then you can go ahead and change it. You know, some people come to say, say, yeah, you know, the Bible says that the Lord is, you know, the Sabbath, right? The Lord is the Sabbath. Uh, Yeshua is the Sabbath. I agree. But also remember that if he is the Lord of the Sabbath, how much more wouldn't our Lord want us to follow his day? His Sabbath day. If he's the Lord of the Sabbath, how much more wouldn't he want us to follow his commandment, his laws? Does it make, does it, does it make sense for God to have written all these laws and stone in his finger, especially this one, and later on change it? I'm going to say this over no and double no. I guarantee you that everybody that comes and tells you, why do you do this on a Saturday? They don't come with prescriptions or anything. They just come because they want to just tell you this. Because it started a long time ago. It started a long time ago. What did I tell you about what Satan tried to do? He's been wanting to separate us from God's creation. He's been wanting to separate us from God's holy day. He's been wanting to separate us from everything God had good for us. You know... You, I've often thought of this and I thought, you know, when I was, I've was been studying this and I was saying, well, Lord, why didn't you just stop on the sixth day? I mean, I, I, my, I thought about this, you know. You go back to creation, why did he just say sixth day and then boom, start again? Why do we have seven? You know, that's what I was thinking. Maybe you've thought of that too. He wasn't done yet. Remember when I told you that love in order for you to love, it's time. He wanted us to enjoy everything he made and he wanted to enjoy it with us because he always mentioned six days, I did this. He set apart the seventh day to enjoy him and rest with him. You know? So, now think about this one. And again, when I'm reading and I'm studying and the, the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, it moves in me. <laughs> I I sometimes find myself having fun. I mean, a lot of times I have fun with the Holy Spirit, right? Because I, these things come to my mind, to my spirit. See, I was thinking, well, if the Saturday is a seven day, so when did God start working? If the seventh day is Saturday, then what's the first day? 
He said he worked for six days. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Started on Sunday. Yes, it took him six days to create the heavens and the earth. And he said that the seventh day is the Sabbath, which is a Saturday. And there's no argument there. Then he started on a Sunday. <laughs> Go with me to Jeremiah 17. It was so, it's so important to you to know these things. You know, you write these scriptures down as I'm going through them. And when somebody comes up to you and tells you, hey, this, show them the scripture. It says, well, here's the scripture that says that he set this aside. Well, that was, well, show him Genesis from the beginning. Show him what I showed you in Exodus. Show him what he showed him in Abraham. Show him what, this, we have all scriptures. It's not me, people. I'm not telling you this because I'm reading it. This is from the word of God. Jeremiah 17, 21. The Bible says this. Thus says the Lord, Take heed to yourselves and bear no burden on the Sabbath day. Bear no burden on the Sabbath day, nor bring it in by the gates of Jerusalem, nor carry a burden out of your houses on the Sabbath day, nor do any work, but hollow the Sabbath day. Keep it holy as I commanded your fathers. But they did not obey nor incline their ear, but made their neck stiff, that they might not hear nor receive instruction. How many stiff necks do you know out there? They don't even want to hear you. They got their necks so stiff like this that you're talking to them. No, they don't want to turn around because I, my grandfather, my great-grandfather, and my grandfather's grandfather's grandfather, and I'm going to cut. That's stiff necks. Even back then, when the Lord was telling them, follow this, many of them didn't want to hear it. They didn't want to receive it. Just like I, get, I, I know that many of you have tried to talk to your people and told them, hey, but what's the problem? Huh? You know, I was thinking about this and I was, I was going and I was saying, man, I, underst I understood what God, you know, in my own way, I understood what he wanted us to do on that day. Because I found myself thinking about, um, you know, whenever you build something, you know, maybe you built a patio and it took you a week, it took you two weeks, whatever it took you, you know, days and time and sweat and all that. What happens when you finished it? What would happen when you finished it? Come on, check this out. Come and look at this. Enjoy it. It would make me, it would make me happy to see accomplishments, right? It makes you happy when you do something and people are enjoying it, doesn't it? Huh? I, I'd build something. My family would come out there. They'd enjoy it. Make me happy. Smiles, you know. Comfort on their faces, you know. But even more when the children were small. When they were small. When my kids were small. I used to go. When on payday, I would go. And I'd stop by, you know. Toys R Us back then, you know. And I used to buy maybe uh, uh, one of those uh, pri uh, Fisher Price, whatever. Um, I don't know what they were called. But they were little tykes or something like that. And I would build these things, right? And the kids would be all there just, you know, waiting for it. And once I build a little tree house and build this, and then they would jump in and they would enjoy it. And I would sit back and see their little smiles and they would be so happy. And they'd come and hug me and thank me and say, thank you, daddy. Thank you, daddy. My. It would, I would rest with just enjoying my kids, enjoying the finished work. How much more does our Father in Heaven enjoy us on His special day that He set aside enjoying everything He created? All His creation, His trees, His everything. And to, and to meet on that day, on that special day He set aside and to praise Him and worship Him and thank Him and say, thank you, Lord, for this creation. Thank you that you have given me this, Father God. 
Sometimes it's sad when you know that people just don't listen because you love these people and they don't pay attention. They're too busy because pride. Because I've done it for so many years, how am I going to change? It can't be right. But yet they don't take the time to look in the scriptures and really find out. They don't take the time to let the Holy Spirit guide them. And what did, the, what did God say? Jesus said, I'm going to bring what? I'm going to bring you a helper. Somebody that's going to remind you. Somebody that's going to guide you. Somebody that's going to tell you what I taught. But not even that. They don't allow him to come in. Blessed ones, there are more teachings out there on this subject. There's a lot of teachings out there good teachers out there that teach on this subject and there's a lot of things I could I could be here for two days maybe even more just teaching on this but these are the important parts of the scripture that will tell you that there, it's so important to God it's so important to the Lord when he said in the fourth commandment remember 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 why do you think that he started this with remember hmm? well how important was him to say remember the sabbath day and keep it holy that's the first thing he said remember the sabbath day and keep it holy you know why because he knew this day was going to come he knew that these days were going to come where people weren't even going to pay attention to his word people weren't even going to pay attention to what he wanted because everybody has put their own philosophies and their own thinkings and their own, you know, mix in there. Just like the Pharisees when they came in and tried to do that. You know, they put in all their mixture in there. But God said, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. So when people come up to you and ask you and tell you why this, tell them. Because my God, holy hallowed this day my God sanctified this day my God said the seventh day was the holy day not the Sunday it was the seventh day it was Saturday it was Sabbath the bottom line is this this is the bottom line who are you going to believe the word of God or, God, or man's traditions and philosophies who are you going to believe there is no confusion in this matter. There isn't no confusion. There isn't is God said that my Sabbath is not to make it to make it burdensome. People have made it burdensome. Because every time that you say I, I serve on a Sabbath, right away they connect you to a seven-day Adventist or some other kind of denomination. But it's not about that. We're not seven-day Adventists. Not that there's nothing wrong with that. Okay? I'm not talking about seven-day Adventists. A lot of teachers are great. But that's the only thing they connect you to these people. And what's wrong with that? You know? There is no confusion in this matter. There shouldn't be no confusion. It's clear and it's in the word. The Lord clearly states what day he set apart for us to rest in his name. To praise and worship and that and blessed ones. It's the seventh day known as the Sabbath. That's the day he set apart. Not any other day. And I'm going to say this over and over again. I'm not attacking anybody out there. Please don't get me wrong. But as I stated over and over again, I'm here. God has appointed me to teach the truth. And I say it wholeheartedly. I say it with all my heart. I'm here to teach the truth the truth from the word of God not from my lips not from it's from the word of God the Bible itself the guide this book is what I teach out of because every time I look at this, this these words pop out on me they always come true they always come it's like it's like he said it's the living word of God so don't think that I'm attacking anybody out there. I'm just telling people out there, get to this book, read it. Read it, let the, let, let the Holy Spirit guide you. And I'll tell you over and over again, be like the Bereans in the book of Acts. 
the Bereans that were called the noble ones, the Bereans that did research. Every time they would hear a preaching, they would go and they would do their own research. Right now, when, I, when we're off the air, I want you to go and get your Bibles and start marking these, start looking at these scriptures. Read the whole chapters. For that is what God wants us to do. On this special day, on this sanctified day, on this holy day, God wants you to seek Him. God wants you to rest in Him. God wants you to worship Him. God doesn't want your head and your thoughts somewhere else. He wants it on Him. This is why He keeps repeating, six days, do everything you have to do on six days, but give me one day for me only. For me only, that's what He said. For I am your Creator. I am your Father. I am the God who set you free. want to leave you with this because I know that as time goes on there's going to be a lot of questions there's going to be a lot more people coming to you and asking you and telling you this thing. but this is the opportunity you know what many people that go out there and ask me or the first thing I, I don't wait I tell them hey guess what man the Sabbath I worship on the Sabbath you know, because they're always ready to come up to people and tell you, why do you worship on the Sabbath? Well, I go up to people and say, why do you worship on Sunday? Because if you can find me a scripture that says that that, that day was changed, then I might take a look at it. But don't come up and tell people that, hey, why do you do this when you don't have no backup? You're just saying it because you want to say it, because you've been traditionalized for many years. Do your own research. Look it up. Find out. For that is what God wants us to do. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for this word. Thank you, Yah, for this word that you have given us today. Father, I pray that this word went deep in those souls, in those hearts, Father God. I pray that this word talked to people out there, Father God. I pray that this word, Father God, gave them that urge that to go out and just search. I pray, Father God, that this list lit a flame, Father God, that they will be able to go in the word and just start looking and researching, asking questions, whatever needs it. Whatever needs to be done, Father God, I pray right now. I pray for health. I pray for everybody out there to be safe, Father God. I reach out, Father God, and I say, thank you, Lord, for these people. Thank you for the people that are listening. Thank you for the people that are searching. Thank you for the people that are still continuing to search the truth. Thank you, Lord. And also, Father God, bless those that are still out there, that are still stiff-necked. That's all right. One day they'll see. And hopefully it's not too late. I pray, Father God. I pray for the families, Father God, that are out there. For the people that are still fighting out here, this virus, you know, nurses, doctors, policemen, all these people that are putting their life out there on the, on the line. I pray for the United States, Father God. I pray that we can come up with better solutions. Father God, I pray this. I pray this in the name of all names. In the name of Yeshua, our Messiah. Jesus. Amen. I'm going to give you the blessing. My Lord, just go deep in their hearts, Lord. Just go deep in their hearts. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine His face upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon, upon you and give you peace. I thank you all for joining us and have a blessed, blessed day. Shalom. Thank you.